Well, friends, welcome to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for Tuesday. Uh, this is September the 20th, 2022. I'm Brian J. Monroe, pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church, and this is coming to you from my office there in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. We have uh, three passages to hear from the Revised Common Lectionary today, and then a short devotional from Oswald Chambers, My Utmost for His Highest. So we begin with Psalm 106, verses 40 to 48. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against his people, and he abhorred his heritage. He gave them into the hand of the nations so that those who hated them ruled over them. Their enemies oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their power. Many times he delivered them, but they were rebellious in their purposes and were brought low through their iniquity. Nevertheless, he looked upon their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake he remembered his covenant and relented according to the abundance of his steadfast love. He caused them to be pitied by all who held them captive. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and give glory to your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. And from our semi-continuous reading of the book of the prophet Jeremiah, we will read Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 1 to 16. Hear the word that the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel, thus says the Lord. Learn not the way of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people of the peoples are vanity. A tree from the forest is cut down and worked with an axe by the hands of a craftsman. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails so that it cannot move. Their idols are like scarecrows in a cucumber field and they cannot speak. They have to be carried, for they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither is it in them to do good. There is none like you, O Lord. You are great, and your name is great in might. Who would not fear you, O King of the nations? For this is your due, for among all the wise ones of the nations and in all the kingdoms, there is none like you. They are both stupid and foolish. The instruction of idols is but wood. Beaten silver is brought from Tarshish and gold from Obhaz. And they are the work of the craftsmen of the hands of the goldsmith. Their clothing is violet and purple. They are all the work of skilled men but the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. At his wrath, the earth quakes and the nations cannot endure his indignation. Thus shall you say to them, the gods who did not make the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under the heavens. It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. When he utters his voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens, and he makes the mist rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain, and he brings forth the wind from his storehouses. Every man is stupid and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols, for his images are false and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of delusion. At the time of their punishment they shall perish. Not like these is he who is the portion of Jacob, for he is the one who formed all things. And Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. 
And from the New Testament, we have a reading from the first letter to the Corinthians from the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 to 23. Paul writes, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. And to those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. This is your eternal word, Almighty Father God. May you be praised for the good and generous and gracious provision of it to us. And Lord, grant us through the power of the Holy Spirit the ability not to just hear your words, but to understand them, to have them enter into our minds and our hearts and into our very souls and therein work what is good and pleasing to your will. We pray this in the name of Christ. Now, uh, the reading for September 20th from Oswald Chambers, My Utmost for His Highest, entitled The Divine Rule of Life. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Our Lord's exhortation in these verses is to be generous in our behavior to all people. In the spiritual life, beware of walking according to natural affinities. Everyone has natural affinities. Some people we like and others we do not like. We must never let those likes and dislikes rule in our Christian life. If we walk in the light, as God is in the light, the scriptures say, God will give us communion with people for whom we have no natural affinity. One example our Lord gives us is not that of a good man or even of a good Christian, but of God himself. Be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Show to the other man what God has shown to you, that God will give us ample opportunities in actual life to prove whether we are perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. To be a disciple means that we deliberately identify ourselves with God's interests in other people. That you should love one another as I have loved you, Christ said. The expression of Christian character is not do good doing, but God-likeness. If the Spirit of God has transformed you within, you will exhibit divine characteristics in your life. Not good human characteristics. God's life in us expresses itself as God's life, not as human life trying to be godly. The secret of a Christian is that the supernatural is made natural in him or her by the grace of God. And the experience of this works out in the practical details of life, not in times of communion with God. When we come in contact with things that create a buzz, we find to our amazement that we have power to keep wonderfully poised in the center of it all. Almighty Father God, help us remain wonderfully poised and centered on you. Not trying to be like you, but letting you move through us so that people can see you, really you, in how we are, what we do. Not that we make choices, but we simply release our control to you so that your perfection can shine through. And may that be the testimony that we bring. We pray this to your glory in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, and soon returning King. Amen. Well, friends, I pray this has been a good time for you. It's always a good time for me when I get to read scripture for you. It's always a good time for me when I get to 
read Oswald Chambers' words to you. And I pray that it will be a blessing to you until we can be together again to do more of the same. I bid you in the name of Jesus Christ. Shalom.